When Vichar approached me and offered the opportunity to change the way of how I normally play video games, I was quite enticed by their introduction of these XR glasses and what they could do. However, I was also a little skeptical about if extended reality was something that gamers would actually want to use, even though many reviews are saying that this is the future of gaming. Part of the reason is because I've tried VR, and even though I loved it, it still ended up collecting dust on my shelf. Now, with the size of these glasses being smaller than the VR headset, and it also being able to connect to most of my gaming devices that supports an external display, it does show the potential of being able to easily fit into many gamers' everyday lifestyle. So I agreed to give it a try and spend the past one whole month doing all my gaming with the Vitro One XR glasses. And now in today's video, as we go through the unboxing and first impressions, followed by the features of the Vitro One, I will also be sharing with you what it was like gaming with these XR glasses and under which circumstances did I find using these glasses better than a monitor or a TV. And like with all my reviews, I'm not paid to say anything unless stated otherwise, so you could support me by simply by hitting that subscribe button if you're new to this channel. Alright, let's get started with the unboxing! As VShare sent over the mobile dock kit, which is a large kit with a lot of goodies in them, I will focus this unboxing section on just the XR glasses. Sliding the box out of the sleeve, I especially like how the box opened up to reveal the contents inside. With the choice in the quality of packaging materials, such as the textured paper that's wrapping the box, it shows that VTuber pays attention to the little details to give off a premium feeling for their product. Picking up the carrying case, it feels sturdy enough to protect the glasses when you want to transport them, but it's a bit larger than your average glasses case, so it will not easily fit into pockets. Other accessories that come with the glasses include three extra nose clips that you can swap out to find the ideal height and viewing angle depending on your nose structure, and a rubber piece to help prevent your hair from getting caught by the cable that connects the glasses. Taking the glasses out of the case, my first impression of them is that they don't look too otherworldly or flashy. They look like a generic pair of sunglasses with significantly thicker front frame and temples and have extra lenses. With the body made mostly from matte black plastic, they feel surprisingly sturdy with some degree of flexibility at the hinges thanks to these tiny springs. Though as someone who wore glasses since I was in middle school, I do wish that these hinges are made from stronger materials so that they won't break too easily. Putting them on, they do look a bit small for my large head, but they don't feel tight or squeeze against the sides of my head. They also don't feel front heavy and actually feels lighter than they appear to be. At 78 grams, the weight honestly surprised me when I wore them for the first time. Considering that they are considerably heavier than my normal glasses, I find them comfortable to wear for up to around 4-5 to five hours without any issues. But sometimes, especially if I'm sitting upright and wearing it for longer than that in one go, the bridge of my nose would start to feel a little bit sore from the weight and gravity. Now, to power up the glasses, you will need to use the one2 meters long USB-C propriety cable that comes with the glasses because there are no batteries inside the Vitro One. The cable will easily attach onto the glasses via a simple yet satisfying magnetic and can be plugged directly into any device that supports USB-C display out. The glasses will be instantly be recognized as an external 1080p 60Hz display, and I find that this plug-and-play support makes setting up the Vitro One a breeze. I would plug it into any of my mobile phones, ROG Ally or Laptops Thunderbolt ports, and it will work without needing to go through any settings. It's that simple and hassle-free. I like it! For devices that do not support the USB-C display out, such as the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 5, and Xboxes, it is where the mobile dock will be able to bridge the gap. The mobile dock functions as both a HDMI hub that allows you to connect up to two Vitro One glasses to devices with a HDMI output, and it's also a 13,000 mAh power bank that can power itself for up to 12 hours when using HDMI, and keep your handheld devices powered for longer via its USB-C port that supports power delivery of up to 20 watts. There are also these adapters that you can use to attach the mobile dock to the back of the Nintendo Switch or Steam Deck for easier holding, which is a nice feature, but I personally don't use it as it makes the device I'm holding too heavy for extended sessions. And plus, it's a little bit difficult to put on and remove. But no matter which method of connection I used, once the glasses was powered on and I brought the image of both eyes into focus for the first time by adjusting the myopia dials, what really stood out for me wasn't the connectivity options or how easy it was to set up, but instead was how unbelievably clear and sharp the image on the virtual screen is. It seriously completely exceeded my expectations. 
Using micro OLED displays, the projected image is so crisp and sharp that even though my camera is not able to pick up how sharp the image is, you can see that there is no screen door effect and blurry or jagged edges like you will on VR headsets. It really feels as if I'm looking at an actual semi-transparent display. Though, if you were to compare it to an actual OLED screen, it doesn't get as bright, there's no support for HDR, and the contrast and colors are not super vibrant. But don't get me wrong, because it's still very clear and sharp nonetheless. The only thing that didn't quite meet my expectation was the advertised size of 120 inches, which doesn't feel quite as big for me. It's more like I'm watching a 55 or 60 inch screen at a distance of about 2 meters away. But I personally don't mind the current size or more accurately field of view because the virtual screen was already large enough for me to see everything on the screen clearly for everything I was playing and watching during the past month. I'm guessing if it was any bigger, my eyes would probably experience a lot more fatigue from having to look left and right. And also with the larger field of view, the image sharpness of the stated 55 ppd or pixels per degree would have to be sacrificed slightly and I would prefer a sharper image over size. I mean, it comes down to personal preference. So just out of curiosity, which one would you choose? A larger screen or sharper image? Let me know in the comments below. As for using these glasses outdoors or in a bright environment, these glasses also have a built-in electrochromic film that darkens the lens and it has worked without issues for me. I have used them while in the car and parked under the sun while waiting for my kids to finish studying and I could still see the virtual image clearly. I find that by having the option to be able to turn off the tint to also see what is going on around you is a useful feature, although some people might disagree and find it distracting because the tint does not go dark enough. But that's okay, as Vichor also sells these blackout lens shade accessories for maximum blindness, um, I mean immersion. But either way, using outdoors or in a very bright environment, you will need to turn the brightness all the way up in order to retain a sharp and clear image. And doing so will drain the battery of the connected device pretty fast if you're not using the mobile dock. So I recommend using them indoors, which is how I've been using these XR glasses 90% of the time. And most of the time during that past month, I've been using the VTR one from the comfort of my bed and sofa. Because being able to play video games while lying down without needing to hold a device up above your face feels extremely good and comfortable. And not only was I able to play for really long sessions without needing to get up and give my lower back a break, compared to if I was sitting, I could also finally play video games next to my wife and daughter while they are reading or doing homework without distracting them and getting scolded. And talking about being distracted, I also want to point out that the built-in speakers on the temples of the Vitro One is actually quite good in the way that it can clearly deliver audio without being too loud for those next to you. Though I will still recommend earbuds for better immersion and if your partner is an extra light sleeper. Now for the times that I'm not next to a bed or sofa, I only use the Vitro One when I'm stationary because the one time I did try using these glasses while moving, it made me really nauseous. I guess my brain just cannot process having a virtual screen moving along with me while everything else in my peripheral vision is moving away. So I mostly use them when I'm parked in the car or at some place that I know that I can sit down and wait. When using the car, it's like having a portable TV that I can easily bring along with me. And if the Model 3 ever gets the vehicle to load ability, then I would no longer need to rely on cloud or remote gaming as I could just bring the PS5 along with the mobile dock to do some console gaming wherever I go because I now have a super portable virtual display. When using in public spaces like coffee shops, the VTR One lets me have my privacy of watching or playing whatever I wanted. It also allows me to play in a position that doesn't strain my neck and const from constantly looking down, especially when I want to play some games on the ROG Ally or Nintendo Switch. I mean, if you're still young, neck strain probably won't bother you, but for me, neck strain and tension headaches that follows after that, it is a total b As for using with other devices such as my laptop and desktop PC, I try using these glasses as a multi-screen setup for both productivity and gaming. For gaming, it was okay if I used the XR glasses as the main display while opening a walkthrough or chat on the other, but I find that when it comes to productivity use, it doesn't quite work out for me. Because even though I could see both screens with the electrochromic film turned off and brightness turned down, the angle which allows me to see the main screen clearly is limited and will require me to sit higher than the screen or tilt my head backwards a bit. And after a few attempts, it was a lot easier to just use Alt-Tab for me. So I gave up using these glasses for multi-screen setup. But overall, 
I really enjoyed using the Virtual One for gaming and watching content during the past one month. The experience of using the virt virtual display in these XR glasses wasn't that different from using an actual screen for me, but compared to traditional screens, this one was very easy to bring along, quick to set up and also put away. And not only that, it also allowed me to play or consume content for longer sessions in, in a back and neck friendly position. So considering the price of $439, which will also get you a good 27 inch gaming monitor with higher refresh rates, you will need to ask yourself first if this is something that will benefit you. At this price range, it is not exactly cheap or crazy expensive like the Apple Vision Pro. But for instance, if I were to choose between paying $439 just for the glasses or $570 if you want the dock pack for console gaming, or around $500 to a grand for an ergonomic chair as a solution that lets me game longer without my sciatica making my legs go numb, I think I would go for the Vitro One glasses. But this is just one use scenario. What about you guys? If you were to get one, how and what will you be using it for? Let me know in the comments below. All right, thank you Veecher for sending over the mobile dock kit and opening my eyes on XR. And thank you guys as always for watching to the end. If you enjoyed today's video and found it helpful, consider hitting that like button and sharing this video with a friend as it will greatly help me and this channel. And I'll see you again in the next video. Ciao! Or how easy it was to set up, but instead was how unbelievable, unbelievable, unbelievable.